that Darwinism, as it's been taught, is a borderline hoax. But for the last century, uh, practicing biologists have made no advance at all. In fact, they've made, they found hole after hole after hole after hole. In evolution? In evolution. If you're walking by the Rocky Mountains and somebody asked you how they got there, you'd probably just say plate tectonics or erosion or, or some such thing. But if you walked by Mount Rushmore and somebody asked you how that got there, you'd immediately say, well, somebody carved that. You can, by the physical features of the mountain, you can detect the effects of intelligent activity. Intelligent design is, is the idea these days that we can detect the effects of intelligence in life. But with life, we have no previous data. We've never discovered life before and been able to show it was designed. There's no database with which to create a hypothesis. So forgive me if I'm just a dodo in the end, but when it comes to intelligent design, I just don't understand how you can scientifically detect it. I really think part of it is rhetorical and that we should stop talking about the theory of evolution and we should start talking about the fact of evolution because evolution is a fact. Well, maybe, but the truth is these days the issue looks more like a prize fight. In this corner, weighing in with 150 years of knowledge, we have the champion, evolution. But in this corner, with a handful of books, a mousetrap, and Mount Rushmore, we have the intelligent design movement. And at the moment, they seem to have the upper hand. A pattern seemed to be emerging. Attack evolution and go down in history as a dodo. But the story's not that simple, because how is it today, 150 years after Darwin published The Origin of Species, we've ended up with this? I don't believe that we actually descended from apes. I do not believe that in any way, shape, or form we descended from apes. I didn't believe that until I met my uncle who had more back hair than I have facial hair, so yeah, I kind of believe that now. We're faced with the question of who will dictate science for our society. Will it be the scientists, or will it be public relations firms? Will scientists adapt to this new communication environment, or will they go the way of species who failed to change along with their environment?